Hey, everybody. Welcome to True Crime Paranormal. I'm Christy Brower with my co-host and partner in crime, Katie Weaver. Hey, Katie, how are you? Hello. I'm well. I'm cold. Yeah. <laughs> Fall has definitely landed here in Idaho, hasn't it? It has fallen, man. Yes, fall has <laughs> fallen. <laughs> I don't so mind it. I'll today. take these temperatures all day long. Yeah, such a cold, bitter wind today. Man, the mm -hmm. leaves aren't going to be in the trees for much longer at this rate. I know. Yeah, that's so true. We're losing them quick. We are losing them quick. Well, if mm -hmm. you have been following along with us recently, you know that over the weekend we took a tour to Lemhi and Custer counties, um, Chalice and Salmon, Idaho, mostly. And we've, we've posted some of what we've done there. We've got more coming. Yeah. And this story is actually one of the reasons that we went there to begin with. Yeah. We're going to talk about the disappearance of Stephanie Crane, who her disappearance was actually the anniversary was on Sunday, October 11th. While we were there was the 27th anniversary of her disappearance. Yeah. And it's an interesting one for us because she disappeared when we were kids. I, I was 18. I was a senior in high school. Mm -hmm. Or well, I guess I was almost 18. I was I was 17. Yeah. And we remember this very well because at, at oh, that yeah. time, living in rural Idaho, as we did, as she did, this wasn't something that really happened. This wasn't, no. you know, kids didn't disappear without a trace, no. never to be found again. This was not the kind of stuff that happened in our communities. And so it was big news. Mm -hmm. You may yeah. be familiar with this case because it was national news. Oh, yeah. And there's been multiple, uh, you know, documentaries and missing persons cases and things, you know, like national documentaries and things on this case Yeah, over the years. There, there have. Yeah, there have been because it's such a, well, it's such a perplexing case. I mean, there's so little evidence at all. Mm -hmm. But Katie, you have had a very clear read on this case and what happened to Stephanie for mm -hmm. quite a long time now. Mm hmm. And so we thought, since we visited Chalice, so we'll be able to show you um, in the video, you'll be able to see some footage of the places that she was, you know, in, in the day, on the day that she went missing. We're sharing some of that. Uh, and, and then we're just going to talk about the story. And then you're going to give your read on, yeah. on what you think happened to poor little nine-year-old Stephanie Crane. Yeah. We have used this case in years past in teaching forensic uh psychic work yes you know, a forensic mediumship and forensic psychic uh readings uh we've used this case as an example lots of times and so we're we're deeply familiar with this case right right we are uh we you know and and because it's one that's been local to us it's one that is near and dear so we thought now would be yeah. a great time to to share it with you on the 27th anniversary of her disappearance yeah so i'm going to give the story kind of the timeline and then i'm going to turn it over to you katie to give us the read on it okay Okay, so as we know, Stephanie Crane went missing on October 11th, 1993. Mm -hmm. She was nine years old at the time, and she lived in Chalice, Idaho. So she disappeared somewhere around, somewhere in the afternoon while going bowling with her friends after school. It's important to know that the bowling alley is literally just across the highway from the elementary school where she was going to school. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, you can see the bowling alley from the school. It's very, yeah. very... This is a very small space and small amount of time in which she went missing. Right. Well, and the bowling alley, according to the Charlie Project, was very near her home as well. Yes. Everything was kind of close together. Yeah. She wasn't very, very far from home or school no. when this all went on. So at about 8.15 p.m. on October 11th, Stephanie's mother, Sandy Crane, went to the Custer County Sheriff's Office and reported that she could not find her daughter. So she had been looking for her for a little while, trying to figure out where she'd gone and why she didn't come mm -hmm. home from bowling like she was supposed to. Stephanie at the time was three and a half feet tall. She was tiny. She was between 75 and 80 pounds. She had brown hair and blue eyes. She was wearing maroon sweats and a maroon white and maroon and white striped top with the words gimme across the front of the maroon uh, shirt, and she had on white tennis shoes. So by 9 p.m., Custer County Sheriff, uh, Search and Rescue, and the Ch Chalice Volunteer Fire Department were all out searching for Stephanie. Chalice is a tiny little town. There weren't that many places to look, to be perfectly honest. 
So there was one, one lead that came in the search was that someone saw her, they thought heading home. Now you got to understand she lived near the bowling alley. She lived near the school. Um, Stephanie had told someone at the bowling alley after she left the bowling alley that she was going to the football field at the high school, which was literally across the street from mm -hmm. the bowling alley. Um, they well, did she told her mom. She had told one of the moms offered her a ride home. Right. And she'd said and she, she needed to go over to the football field. Mm -hmm. She said she left her backpack over there uh, at, at soccer practice. Yeah. And that she needed to go get it. Yeah. And it was literally just across the street. Mm -hmm. and, and very near her home. Now, it is a highway. It, it is, is a highway. A highway. Mm -hmm. It's Highway 93. And well, when you think of highway, don't think of highway that you may be familiar with. Think of like right. bigger, busier road than most small towns would have. Yeah, but not a huge highway at all. No, it was no. going right through the center of town, if that tells you anything. So the sheriff and one of the deputies, they start searching the creek that's between the bowling alley and the crane residence. And they searched throughout the whole town of Chalice. They went, searched the high school, the elementary school, and all of the surrounding areas. They contacted all of Stephanie's friends and most of her classmates and, and anybody else that was going along with going along for bowling. And no one had seen her. No. So the search, they suspended the search at 12.30 a.m. the next day, which was October 12th. And they planned to start searching again at seven o'clock the next morning. So the next day they had 300 searchers, two planes, hundreds of phone calls, FBI agents, Custer County Sheriff's deputies, Idaho State Police, Idaho Bureau of Investigation, fish and game officers, and a team of tracking dogs looking for her. And none of that came up with anything. She literally vanished off the street in Chalice, Idaho. They checked the river, the Salmon River, didn't turn up any sign of her there in the river. They found literally nothing, not one tiny piece of evidence, no indication of her at all. No, 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 just vanished. Yeah. So then they, they started going national with the search. And so she was reported to, there was a report about her on America's Most Wanted and CNN. Um, they handed out tons and tons of flyers with her picture. I remember these flyers very well. Do you remember the flyer, Katie? Oh, yeah. It was everywhere. Oh, yeah, they were everywhere. Yeah. They were clear here. We, we had them here and we're, mm -hmm. you know, a few hours from Chalice, but we had them here. I re I'll never forget this picture mm -hmm. of Stephanie because of those flyers. They were around everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. For years and years. Yeah. They were everywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, basically they did a nationwide mailing of her flyer. Mm -hmm. This is all basically happening over several years. Yeah. Um, yeah. Custer County Sheriff's Office, they got um, the National Center for Missing and, and Exploited Children involved in 2010. And they requested some assistance from Project Alert. Uh, Project Alert is retired law enforcement. Um, and they're trained by the National um, Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Um, and they help with missing children cases. And they mm -hmm. specialize in long-term missing children cases. Mm -hmm. Still found nothing. In 2012, Custer County Sheriff searched different areas of the county after receiving some tips on where Stephanie might be. Uh, but they never had anything definitive and they never found her. They never found anything, actually. No. Not a thing. Sadly, both of Stephanie's parents have passed away without ever knowing what happened to her. Her mother, yeah. Sandy Crane, passed away on August 14th of 1997. She only lived four years. Yeah. past the time that her daughter went missing. Mm -hmm. And Stephanie's father, Ben Crane, passed away on October 11th, 2012, which was the anniversary of her going missing. Yeah. It's reported that they both passed from natural causes. Mm -hmm. Um, although I find that, you know, that's an interesting way of putting, you know, died mm -hmm. of a broken heart, died of the extreme stress of right. having a missing child. Well, mom died of uh, blood clots in her lungs. Mm -hmm. And so I wasn't sure if that was a, like a congenital thing or what, a, what was she 32? 
yeah. year old she was doing too. with blood clots in her lungs. But yeah. Yeah. Well, and didn't yeah. I well, think I heard they, dad died of a heart attack, didn't he? I believe so. He yeah. died of a heart attack on the anniversary of her death or of her going missing. Of her going missing. Well, and they also, they divorced shortly after her disappearance. They didn't yeah. make it very long. And mom actually moved to Nevada and left dad in uh, Chalice to raise the other kids. Yeah. Just couldn't yeah. just stay yeah, there. Just destroyed them. Yeah. And dad eventually moved away too, right? To Washington. He moved to Washington. Yep. Yeah. I I have such empathy for them. Of course, they were looked at heavily yeah. when Stephanie went missing. They were, you know, mm -hmm. suspects number one and two. They never mm -hmm. found anything to indicate that they had done anything to her. No, they took and passed multiple uh, polygraph tests and there was absolutely no evidence. I mean, the, even the tracking dogs lost her scent within a few yards of the bowling alley and it's all they had. Yeah. There was at one point a, a pickup, wasn't there? There was a tip about a pickup, a two-tone pickup. Mm -hmm. It was seen in the area at the time of what they think was her disappearance. A, a yellow pickup. A yeah, yellow pickup. there was. You got two-tone pickup came from me. But <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> There I'm was jumping in at your reading. About a yellow pickup. That's there was right. also a tip. Some of the kids said that there was a weird guy watching them bowl. Mm -hmm. But uh, they were at the bowling alley. And there's, I don't know if you guys have been to the bowling alley, but there's always a weird guy at the bowling alley. <laughs> but right. there, some of the kids said there was a weird guy, but none of the parents substantiated that. And yeah. so there was also some incident with a white van down the road from there where two men had ended up in a fight and they mm -hmm. wondered about that van too. And then later uh, cleared that van. Part of the, uh, the challenge is that it's hunting season and there are a lot of people that come from other places to hunt in salmon and chalice for yes. the, uh, for the sheep, for the bighorn sheep and deer or, and uh, good Lord. Yeah, yes, probably for deer and elk too, but yeah, for the, the sheep and the goats, the mountain goats. Yeah. And so there was a lot of hunters in town. So there were a lot of weird people, you know, weird people or unidentified vehicles and stuff because of the time of year, you know, and we were just there this weekend, same time of year. And that's mm -hmm. most of what we saw were people from out of the area that right, were there to right. hunt. Lots of hunters. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it was difficult to identify if somebody was there that shouldn't have been or, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. because there were, it, it definitely is a is a haven for sportsmen at that time of the year. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and fishermen, too, that are coming to fish on the Salmon River. Yeah. Late. There's, there's a certain run this time of year, too, that the salmon run that they come and fish. So, yeah, just a lot of, a lot of activity. Yeah, a lot of activity. And, and that did make it harder at the time, I think. Mm -hmm. um, there is still a $50,000 reward for information leading to the arrest and conviction of the person responsible for her disappearance. Mm -hmm. The case is open. Um, the Custer County Sheriff has said that it will continue to be an open and active case until they find out what happened to her. Yeah. Um, but they literally have nothing to go on at this point. No, no. They have the guy that uh, the police ended up having a shootout with that killed yeah. a police dog. In our area. In our area and, and shot an officer. And But they had uh, no actual proof that he had anything to do with that case. He was just a known sex offender that, uh, you know, that they had a, an incident with. But some people have really wanted to really associate that case and the Amber Hoops, another missing child from this area, mm -hmm. on him. But there's absolutely no evidence. No. You know, it, make it, so. it was totally grasping. And and he's mm -hmm. dead, unfortunately, because he had a shootout with the police when he was on the run. And right. so there's no way of knowing if, if he no. really had anything to do with uh, Stephanie Crane or Amber no. Hoops, who we should probably also cover her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the guy in question, whose name I apologize, I don't have right now, but he, I mean, he was a sex offender and a horrific human, but there's just, it would be easy to just pin her death on him because of 
you know, be, because that would be easy, but there's just no evidence that actually right. makes it so. There was another man in the Chalice area that killed himself, um, you know, many years after the fact. And left a note that said that he just couldn't live with the horrifying things that his friend told him about murdering a little girl from Chalice. Right. And they stormed that friend's home and life and, you know, overturned every stone with him. And there was, he had no idea what this guy was talking about. And also... There was no evidence he passed a polygraph with, you know, flying colors, which isn't everything. But, I mean, he alibied out of it entirely. Like, there was just nothing there. It was a non-starter. But they thought for a minute maybe that was their smoking gun. But, no. But it wasn't. Yeah. And now no one really knows why in the world he said that or left a note that said that when he killed himself. But, mm -hmm. so there have been some leads, but they with absolutely nothing concrete. And actually, yeah. most of them just always ended in. up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I know that you have a very solid read on what happened to Stephanie Crane. And do. so why don't you share that with us? I'm going to move this lamp behind me. I forgot. Okay. One of our listeners told me, or watchers said, you should really move that lamp. It looks like you're wearing a weird hat. And I forgot, <laughs> but I keep looking at it going, damn it, I was going to move this lamp. <laughs> I don't want to look like I'm wearing a weird hat. So... <laughs> But okay. I knew I was going to cause a commotion when I did it. So, okay. It's done. <laughs> well, we don't want you looking like you're wearing a weird hat. No more weird hat. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. So on the day in question, I do feel like she crossed the highway. I do feel like she retrieved her book back. Her backpack was somewhere, you know, and mm -hmm. I feel like she did go and get her backpack. On her way back from there, before she got to the highway, I feel like somebody stopped and picked her up. This is an older man. I feel like he knew her family-ish, you know? I mean, this is a tiny town. Everyone knew each other. And I feel like she knew him or at least, you know, was loosely uh, aware of him. I feel like he was around her grandparents' age mm -hmm. and that he just stopped and just said, hey, I, you know, I'm, I'm headed to your family. Why don't you jump in and I'll give you a ride? Then it was just that innocent for her. Um, interestingly, I have always seen that truck as one of those old Chevys that were the two-tone, um, yeah. yellow, like the yellow and gold two-tone. Mm -hmm. It was like an old beat up, you know, single cab POS truck. Yeah. Um, she jumped in the truck. It was no big deal. I feel like maybe this person had given her rides before. Like it was no question of her safety mm -hmm. to get in with this person. I feel like he drove directly to his home. And drove right into the garage and shut the door. That is the last that, uh, you know, she was ever not in his house. Mm -hmm. I feel like he took her into his basement. I do feel like he, you know, assaulted this child and, you know, did some terrible things to her and murdered her. Mm -hmm. And then I feel like he buried her in his basement in a dirt floor. I think he had an old house that had one of those. Uh, like cellars or fruit rooms or pantries or whatnot mm -hmm. that had a dirt floor and that he had plenty of time because nobody suspected him or had any ideas. But I feel like he dug a pretty good hole in that room and buried her deep, deep in the floor and that that's where she is. Some interesting things about him. I have always felt like he was an old single guy that had never married. And that, uh, you know, he was one of the guys in that area that was mostly he hunted and he fished. He was an outdoorsman. And it's why he lived there. I feel like he wasn't close to much of anybody except for his next door neighbor. I have seen always seen this woman around him that was a widow or divorced, but a single lady that was his next door neighbor, not romantically inclined, but they were friends. You know, they'd sit on their porches and have coffee and chat and they would you know, she would bring him bread when she cooked or, you know, they, they were neighborly. They took decent care of each other. I feel like she was like the only person that he had very much association with, except for maybe some, you know, fishing, hunting buddies type things. But that was pretty much it. He mostly kept to himself. Mm -hmm. I don't think that she suspected anything. Nobody suspected anything out of him. He didn't do anything out of the ordinary, really. You know, people around town knew him just like they knew a lot of people. But that was it, you know. 
I feel like he died around 10-ish years after Stephanie died and that that secret is just gone to the grave. I feel like the house is still standing. The house, I feel like, is brick that's been painted. Mm. You know what I mean? Old brick houses that somebody has gone back over and painted. That's what it looks like to me, that it's painted like maybe white, but it's an old brick house with a brick porch that's all been painted and probably years and years and layers and layers of paint on it. But that's how I see it. Uh, I've always gone back to that same ass question. Why? You know, why? Because he was a predator. Mm -hmm. I've asked multiple times in this case, is this his first victim? Has he ever done this before? I actually think it was his first and only victim. I don't feel like he'd done it before. I feel like he had fantasized about things like this. He'd thought about doing things like this. Mm -hmm. I don't think he set out to do it that night. Just things happen to fall into place mm -hmm. the, in, in mm -hmm. just the right time. Yeah. And he picked this little one up. Nobody saw her. And whatever was happening in his brain that, you know, he yeah. went for it. I feel like he even helped search for her. I feel like he was a part of the search party, uh, you know, mm -hmm. and was one of those guys sitting in the coffee shop going, isn't it sad? Isn't it terrible? What an awful thing mm -hmm. that he knew all the while, but I don't feel like anyone ever suspected him. He was older. I would say he was probably in his sixties when this happened. Mm -hmm. He had kind of shaggy white balding hair. I mean, how nondescript can you get? You know, he mm -hmm. looked just like a lot Pretty of people. Were jealous. <laughs> yeah, that live in that area. Yeah. And again, I feel like he took it to his grave. Nobody knew. Nobody's going to know. Yeah. Maybe someday. I would imagine that that house has been updated by now. And there's probably been cement poured. Probably. I mean, at that time, it wasn't that unusual for houses in Chalice to have some of them to have dirt floors. I mean, we have a yeah, basement. A, yeah. 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 A basement. You know, we have mm -hmm. a, some family members with a house out there that didn't have power for a long time. I mean, it yeah. wasn't, you know, th this is pretty backwoods Idaho. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, to have dirt, you know, like we're, our grandparents had a, um, a fruit room in there, like a cellar in their basement that was dirt floor because you mm -hmm. stored your canning, can, your canned goods in there because it kept them cold. Yeah. And old houses, mm -hmm. you know, around here, that's not that unusual. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I will say, I believe that Stephanie died the day she disappeared. I think she died within hours of disappearing yeah. and, you know, that all of the searching, you know, was for naught because she was gone. Yeah. I've always felt that even when I, you know, was 17 and this first happened, I've always felt like she was gone immediately. Yeah. But, but what a thing to, you know, for there to be the reason there's no trace of her at all is because as soon as she got into that pickup, she was gone. Yeah. Right. Right into the garage, garage door shut. That's it. Yeah. Well, and because this happened in his home and in his basement, he had plenty of time, right. To clean up the evidence, to bury her, like nobody was coming over there. No, no, you know, no one had any reason to search his house or suspect anything. And then he just, you know, stepped right out of that house, blended into everyone else that was concerned in the community. And there it was. Yeah. No reason to suspect him. None at all. No. Yeah. No. And I do think that he was, he knew her grandpa, you know, he knew her grandparents. He knew people. I mean, again, he wasn't like super close to anybody, but he knew everybody and just was just another guy in town. Well, and you have to know about Chalice, and this is kind of a common thing in, in small towns in Idaho, and I'm sure it's a common thing in small towns everywhere, is that people who are outsiders are suspect and that people who are from there that everyone knows, these are not the people that they would have suspected. No. Uh, Chalice is a very closed community. Um, mm -hmm. We were there uh, over the weekend and we were wearing our true crime paranormal t-shirts and mm -hmm. we walked into this little bar and grill to have dinner and literally everyone turned and stared at us until we were seated. Like the, our, our teenage girls who were with us were like, why is everyone looking at us? But it's because we were very clearly not from there. Mm -hmm. and 
trauma. And so the, the distrust, I, to be trusted outsiders. Yeah. 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 And so, you know, I've always felt like with this case that, that there was not really a lot of looking at locals. It was more like somebody yeah. from out of the community must have done this because people mm -hmm. from our, our town wouldn't do such a thing. Totally. Well, and because she disappeared right there at the highway, it yeah. was easy to think that a stranger, you know, grabbed her and shoved her in their vehicle and off they went. Right. You know, now in looking at this case, not too long ago, I was looking at a Reddit thread about this case and the outrage of people that how dare her parents allow this nine year old out by herself. Yeah. That's how it was until yeah. this happened. And then kids were under lock and key. Yeah. Kids were getting picked up from school. There wasn't any walking home anymore. There wasn't any hanging out at the bowling alley or the high school or none of those things, man. That's rocked that poor community, you know, back on its heels in a way that it changed everything forever for the kids Good. that lived there. Even where we lived a few hours away, it rocked everybody. It all it did, of the kids were suddenly because we grew up like that with Steph like Stephanie, walking everywhere oh, yeah. we went and just sort of being you know, out on our own till dinner time, mm -hmm. doing whatever, you know? Oh, yeah. We were free range kids, you know? We but when Stephanie Crane disappeared, that ended for a lot of kids. It did. Yeah. It did. Really, that re the realization that something like that could happen in yeah. even, even in one of our small communities, it really was a shocker, I think. Yeah. Um, for, uh, for everybody. Nobody really considered that something like that would happen in a small Idaho town. Yep. No. Yep, for sure. Yeah, it's such a, such a sad thing. I can still smell, I can smell, not still smell, I can smell that basement, you know, mm -hmm. that musty smell and the dirt and the damp. Yeah. 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 Ugh. Anyway. Yeah. So that's, that's Stephanie Crane. Such do you a sad think her case. body will ever be found? I do, but I think it will be so far in the future that, uh, Maybe they won't even know who this child is, you know, mm -hmm. because that as long as that house is standing, no, yeah, no, I don't. It would ha take that house uh, not being there anymore, you know, and being dug up for some other purpose and set of bones showing up, and that I feel like is possible, but uh, yeah, you know, a gazillion years down the road, but I don't feel like in any kind of time frame that any of us would ever know. No, mm -hmm. it's just never going to happen. What a what a life. I mean, I, it doesn't surprise me that her parents died so young. Right. She has siblings, grandparents, aunts and uncles, cousins, you know, people yeah. who live in that area still. Yeah. To live with the no closure of that situation mm -hmm. forever. Yeah. And then not, you know, just the 100% not knowing, like absolutely not knowing at all. She just yeah. vanished into thin air. Mm -hmm. I just. And I every year. No, every year on the anniversary of her disappearance, there's a new, you know, there's an, there's up, well, we'll call them updates on the case, but there's never anything new, you know, but there's always a little, you know, blurb in the local papers. And there's been pictures of her age acceleration over mm -hmm. the years. Like, this is what she'd look like now. And this is what she'd look like now. And, you know, there's three or four of those out now because it's been so long. Yeah, her yeah. missing poster. There's a new version of her missing poster out, the one that we all knew and have seen over and over again that has her, the age progression photo on it mm -hmm. now too. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's a very sad case for sure. It is. It is. But it's, it's terrifying to think that a child could disappear with literally without a trace the way that she did. Yeah. Yep. Without question. And maybe now, you know, I mean, the bowling alley there is closed. Yeah. But other than that, it doesn't look much different there than it did then. No. You yeah. know, very little has changed. No. Her mom, mom is buried local in the, in the cemetery there. We visited her grave. Yeah. Uh, visited with who we thought was the sexton at the cemetery, mm -hmm. um, as well as a lovely deer who was just mm -hmm. hanging out in the cemetery, sleeping amongst the headstones. We stopped and, you know, took pictures and visited with her a couple of times and she was just chilling. I, yeah. That was so charming to see that deer just it was, hanging yeah, out it was in the cemetery. 
But the lady we visited with, we asked her, is there some kind of a memorial, at least here for Stephanie? And she said, oh, no, they never found her. The way she said that just kind of hit me, you know, they yeah. never found her. Yeah. I would have thought by now maybe there would be something, you know, like uh, Amber Hoops, who's another missing child from here, from Idaho Falls, where I'm from. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there is a memorial for her now. She's been gone almost as long as Stephanie. Yeah. And uh, you'd think, but I don't know, maybe they're just not ready to to give up at this point. I guess at some point you have to, to decide, mm -hmm. are you going to resign yourself to this child as, as, is dead and is never coming back? And maybe yeah. family's not ready for that. Maybe not. Maybe not. We were hoping that there was a memorial that we could pay our respects to, but there's nothing. No, nothing at all. Well, it's certainly a case that we'll keep you updated on if anything ever comes up. Not that we really think it will, unfortunately, but yeah. But if it does, we'll share. We'll share that, and, and mm -hmm. um, you know, we'll continue. You know, marking these cases. I I want to do Amber Hooks here really soon as well because it's a definitely kind of a kind of situation, but even closer to us. Yeah. Yeah. We do have uh, a couple more episodes coming up that are from our cemetery tour trip that we mm -hmm. took. So you want to watch that? We're going to, we're going to do a show about the Bonanza Cemetery, which is a very mm -hmm. interesting place where a lot of people from the gold rush days were, were buried. And yeah. And we then, met uh, a lovely uh, ghost there that we'll share yes. with you. Yeah. Yes. And then uh, a little cemetery there by Bonanza called Boot Hill. It's not the Boot Hill, <laughs> no. but it is a Boot Hill, and it's quite mm -hmm. a story. And we're gonna do um, we're gonna do a cold read case on that. Yes, it is an unsolved murder. It is from over one hundred years ago that we're yeah, gonna so on. Those are a couple of cases we have coming up that we're gonna share with you, as well as of course our Wednesday case update live stream and our Thursday. Uh, psychic hour so yep. don't miss any of those they're all coming up mm -hmm. yeah so thanks for being here with us we are true crime paranormal with the psychic sisters and we really appreciate you being here with us tonight thanks guys take care <laughs>